Um, in accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being audio video recorded. It's also being broadcast on channel eight now. Uh, the all the topics which may be discussed at the meeting and those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as a result of these discussions. Not all items in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting law. Please address all comments to the chair. Um, this meeting of the Conservation Commission is being held by Zoom link. Uh, the Zoom link number is 792. 737-0353. Um, I'm Bob Pease, I'm the chair. Uh, we have three other members with us tonight, which just uh, barely formed. We'll start with a roll call. Uh, Rich Bursch. Rich is working on mute, unmuting himself. Can you hear me now, Bob? Rich Bursch. Present. Uh, Patricia Adams. Present. And Mike Baruch. Present. Thank you so much. Uh, start with uh, announcements and public comment. Do we have any public comment from the board? Do we have any public comment from the public? Um, if not, we'll go straight to new public hearing. Uh, the Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of, oh, wait a minute, uh, minutes. Is anyone, um, have people had a chance to look at the minutes with my, uh, with my comments, which I only sent like an hour ago? I did not. All right. Well, then let's table those until the next meeting um because that's really kind of kind of late uh now on to our first continued public hearing uh the conservation commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent by the town of Lunenburg for removal of an old dump site in municipal conservation land next to bordering veggie wetlands along the kata kunamug <coughs> at 104 104 fairview road and I'm going to share a screen here. Um, at the last uh, meeting, we said we wanted to have the siltation uh, and erosion controls uh, showed, displayed on uh, the map. And this is what we have. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions uh, about this application. If you would buy, just give me a quick second, Bob. I want to bring that up, take a good look at it. All right, you do that. Uh, Mark Popham was going to originally uh, attend this meeting and then he was called and told it was off. And evidently, uh, he has not gotten the message that it's back on. So um, I don't think he's here. I believe that the person identified in the list of participants is Donald Lunenberg is actually Heather. You know, if uh, she may be able to answer any questions we have. I'll do my best. I knew that. So, Bob? Yes, sir. Yeah, so what you've got is the dotted line is the outlined area of work. The proposed siltation was uh, an erosion control was put on as required along with the detail. Yeah. Um, and he also um, showed where he, he put his monument, where his survey was. Um, I think the thing that may have thrown Kim partially off when she reviewed this was that She's used to seeing CAD plans, and Mark Popham is one of the rare breeds who can draw a plan just as good as CAD. Um, everything is to scale. Everything is certified with a stamp. Um, I've seen a ton of Mark's plans over the years, and that's just how he does it. He's one of the few left that actually does 
basically scale drawings, you know, engineer drawings by his hand. And he incorporates all of his survey data in with it. So thank you, Matthew. The, the dotted, the dotted outline there, I from what I understand, a lot of it's going to be um either going to take as much out by hand as possible. And the rest should be pretty easy from there. So Matt, you're saying the siltation is the S dotted down the side and across and back up? That is correct. Okay. All right, uh, a quick question, Heather, when is this going out to bid? Um, so, well, we would need the approvals through conservation and then decide on um, how this would be funded uh, or if we're gonna be applying for any types of grants or um, requesting town meeting funding. Okay, so it's not necessarily happening this springtime? Um, I think Mark had a recommendation on timing just to, uh, that you know would minimize impact to that area and, okay. and the stability of the um, where the equipment would have to be placed in order to take out the materials. Okay, and was that in the um, application? That, I believe, was in his environmental okay. site assessment, and which I think the commission has in their possession. Is that yes, correct? Yes, we do. Okay. And I do remember reading that. Okay. And essentially, he's looking for warmer weather when the flows are down, just to make sure that there's no, you know, potential erosion from wet soils. I mean, mm -hmm. the erosion protection plan he's got up, the S, which you were pointing out, if you notice, it goes in a box outline all around the site on three sides. So he's basically barricading the work area off with the sill fence and the hay bale. Or in the waddles rather. Okay, and I guess that the, the point that the prog, um, project is started, our new agent will be watching it closely. No more questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, are there any questions uh, or comments from members of the public? If there are no questions or comments from members of the public, I'd be looking for a motion to approve this notice of intent. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, roll call vote. Rich Bursch. Aye. Uh, Patty Adams. Aye. Mike LaRouche. Aye. And I for myself. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Have a uh, good the rest of The Conservation day. Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent by Eric Fowler um for uh the development of a four lot residential subdivision at 711 uh, massachusetts avenue and um i believe wesley i uh, was representing the uh the applicant yes <clears throat> wesley fliss whitman and bingham associates were a division of haley ward uh at the last meeting there was some conversation about uh, the alternatives analysis, specifically uh, an economic alternative analysis. I know in the DEP comments, uh, there was a question in regards to if we could remove one of the duplexes off the property and to see what kind of impact that would have. And so since that meeting, the applicant has prepared the document that you see in front of you this evening showing you their cost analysis between the two options being the eight units, the way the design was presented um, in removing the two units or the one duplex, making it six units. Um, and I think you can kind of see on the right-hand side, you know, that, that I think that the client and, and, and myself, we were trying to explain to the commission, there was some, uh, I guess, hesitation or worry on their part 
that with the way the uh, building costs right now are going, that removing the two units would make the, the project really a no-go. And you can see where the, the analysis that you see in front of you where, you know, the some of the numbers that they come up with right now, they're looking at uh, a profit with eight units and basically a, a, a net zero with the six units. Um, and, you know, really the biggest variable right now is uh, material costs. Uh, material costs are still on the higher side um, due to a shortage of materials. Obviously, if those numbers go down some, you know, the, the, the profit will go up some, uh, which would make it, uh, the project, you know, a little better with regards to the eight units. Like, you know, um, when we look at, uh, you know, these projects, I know when we deal with a lot of like the 40 B products, you know, they like to be around the 10% profit. Um, so the profit margin on this isn't necessarily hundred percent ideal for what they're looking for, but I think what they're hoping for is by the time they actually really start building units that the, the cost of material hopefully goes down a little bit. So they get closer to that 10%, but you can see where, at least in the analysis that they did as today's prices, you know, the, the six units really doesn't make sense for them to do because the, you know, it becomes basically, you know, they're, they're not making any money. It's going to be a, a zero, you know, a zero amount of profit basically um, with the way, the way the numbers end up working out. And I know it shows a, 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 a loss of 13,800, but in the end of the day, they basically look at it as a zero. Um, and so that's kind of why, you know, we were, we had proposed the eight units. Um, you know, obviously if the market was different or if we were two or three years ago when, when construction costs were so much different, you know, we, we may be able to do six units out on the site, but the way the market is now, the eight units are required to be able to make a profit on this site. Thank you. And I don't know if commission members had a chance to look at this. Um, we received it a few days ago. Okay. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chair, just wanted to thank uh, Wes and the builder for providing this. It is helpful to look at it. So now we have some evidence in front of us as to why they can't put the six unit subdivision in. And hopefully it'll provide us with a, a bit of a template moving forward to review projects a little closer that are put in uh, sensitive areas as this riverfront for Katakutamuk Brook is. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You bet. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? Any comments or questions from members of the public? I'm uh, looking for a motion to approve this notice of intent. So moved. We have... Second. Uh, roll call vote. Richard Bursch. Aye. Patty Adams. Aye. Clarouche. Aye. And I for myself. Wesley, I have one question before you go. Is Jamie Rose still with your firm? Sure. Is Jamie Rose Jamie still, is with still yes. He, yeah, he's still there. Yep. Okay. I've been trying to get a hold of him. So, uh, all right. Thank you. You're, Bob, so your best bet is to maybe reach out to uh, myself or somebody else in the office. Jamie is all over the place at this point. So uh, I, I, I will, I will give you a call. Okay. That's, it's probably right, the thanks. easiest way to do it. So thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, bye. The Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent by William M. Key for work at 445 Townsend Harbor Road for the replacement of railroad tie steps and a timber retaining wall within the buffer zone. Uh, I don't think Bill is here tonight. Uh, we do not have uh, a DEP number. Um, there's a problem with- uh... Bob? Yes, sir. Um, basically, Speaking to DEP and speaking to Bill, we just had him resend a check in. Yeah. So I gave him the um, the transmittal sheets and uh, told him what to write out for the amount, where to fill it in, and she told him where to send it. So he sent it right out. And that was a couple of weeks ago. So we probably will have something by the next meeting. I hope so. Because if we don't, I'm going to want to pass it, pass it without it. Because this, is, this has been a long, long time. I want to stop sharing my screen. Make a motion to continue till March 2nd. Thank you, Richard. Do we have a second? second. All right. Roll call vote. Rich Burke. Aye. Uh, Patty Adams. Aye. Mike LaRouche. Aye. And I for myself. Uh, the
a public hearing on a notice of intent by Zachary Taylor for the construction of a new duplex home, septic and related site grading at 123 Chase Road. Tell us about this application, Matt. Okay, as I noted at the last meeting, they had asked for the continuances um, basically due to the fact that they reevaluated the project and they're trying to pull the material out of the, you know, pull the work out of the buffer zone. Yeah. Um, if such is the case, they will have a, a definitive for the next meeting, whether they're going to come or withdraw. All right. I'm looking for a motion to continue. Make a motion to continue to March 2nd. Uh, we have a second. So, second. Uh, roll call, Rich Birch. Aye. Pat. Aye. Mike. Aye. And I for myself. On to new business. Um, I'm looking, uh, I, I sent everybody tonight a picture of the new gates. Uh, and it, it's in a, it's, they're contained as attachments in, in an email. Uh, they were uh, constructed, uh, they're fabricated by E.T. Duval. And uh, they have to be moved from uh, uh, E.T. Duval's uh, shipping bay uh, to the uh, yard of the DPW uh, until such time as the DPW can install them. And uh, E.T. Duval recommended to me uh, uh, Aldrich uh, uh, Auto Body, uh, the, who they usually use. And I went down. And uh, I got a quote from them of $250. And I'm looking for a motion uh, not to exceed $250, maybe less than that. Move. Uh, I'm looking for a motion, uh, the expenditure of up to $250 from the Timber Rights Fund uh, for a purchase order for uh, Alder Child Auto Body. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Roll call. Rich Bursch. Aye. Patty. Aye. Mike. I and I for Bob. Um, I sent you a copy of a uh, discussion of the properties on the tax lien sheet. They're sent uh, to uh, myself and um, Brandon Kibbe, who, by the way, is no longer the chair of the Open Space Committee. Mike Tuhill is now the chairman of the Open Space Committee. Um, and uh, you know, asking if you're interested in any of the properties. And so it was discussed at the meeting of the Open Space Committee and they recommended um, uh, uh, 101 Pleasant Street, which I think is kind of a waste of time because you know, we just approved the development there. I'm pretty sure they're gonna pay the taxes you know, and develop it. And then three properties that are up sort of between um, uh, West Street and uh, Prospect Street there um, that will form, you know, like a, a bunch of properties. And he took, they, so Mike presented him to that, to the uh, select board this past week. Um, I haven't yet had a chance uh, to watch the meeting. Um, and, uh, but you saw that the select board were, they're, they were divided on it. And I just didn't know if we want to take a, a position on any of these properties uh, tonight or uh, wait to see what happens or, you know, I'm, I'm wide open for what anything anybody wants to do here. Want me to call them up on my screen? Sure. All yes, right. please. All right, so let's... First one was, let's see, I think it was uh, this one. 
right here, this one, and this one. These three properties. Uh, if we take and we look at the uh, imagery, local, there we go. You can see uh, the thought was on this one at the, at the um, let's blow it up a little more. that uh, this might make a, a ball field kind of thing. And then the thought was that this, this property, whoop, let's go back, that this property over here and this property over here, um, you know, might provide some open space down in the Southern part of town where there isn't a lot of open space. Um, but also, if you look at the uh, overhead, you can see it appears as though there is a gas line uh, that goes through this property. Um, so does anybody have any comments or want to take a position or we want to leave this uh, to the open space? How do people feel about it? I don't, I sense there's not a lot of strong feelings out there. <laughs> I let, think I let, need to. <laughs> let, let's. Uh, Is it landlocked, Bob? Yeah, uh, no. This one has, uh, this one has frontage on, you know, it gets rid of this. It's got frontage on West, West Street here. West Street here on. Uh, Hollis Road. Uh, Hollis Road. Uh, this one has frontage on, uh, how on, oh, this one may be land, this one, I think. So that one, Bob, is on Car Ave, which is a paper road that runs yep. down along the, um, Whalem driving range. Yep. And the end of, uh, I forget the name of the street here that it ends on. And if you look. Um, even at this house here, which supposedly has a driveway here, it's ac actually access through this other lot here. Um, so, um, so at one time, these three lots were permitted for 140 or so homes. And I know they were in negotiations with the town for sewer and for water. And it just, uh, I think it all kind of fell apart with the uh, recession of 2008. Yep. Because I believe one of the lots supposedly had a 50 foot swath out to Electric Ave to allow them access to the sewer line. Uh-huh. So, um, does anybody, Rich, do you feel like the, uh, Conservation Commission be taking a position on this, or do you think, feel like we should leave this to the to, to the open? I mean, it's a it's a fairly good sized piece of land. It is all wooded up through there. Uh, there is a little brook that runs down through there. It would make a little a nice little section of open space down yep. through there. I'm not sure what it would go for at auction. If it's something that the town would be uh, willing to stomach or not, where it was at one point, and they probably still have the plans for the development. Yeah. So I'd be interested to see what the open space committee had to say. Well, they, I don't think they, there was not, I mean, I was at the meeting. There was not a lot of discussion about, um, uh, you know, what it would cost to, to acquire these parcels. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and you make an excellent point. Um, it's certainly, uh, speaking for myself, I'm more interested in consolidating uh, some of the properties uh, up around Northwest Town Forest and uh, a small town forest uh, than but I don't live in the south end of town, you know, and we certainly have heard from people in the south end of town that, you know, they'd like to see more open space down there. What now is the tax value that's owed on it? Um, 
I can't they, seem to get they, the spreadsheet. They didn't give us right. that information. Okay. They did not give us that information. They just said, and in fact, funny, if you look at the uh, Excel file that I sent you, mm -hmm. there was a funny note at the end of it about uh, hold off or something like that. Well, let me see if I can find it. Oh, wait a minute. There's somebody named Bill in the waiting room, I have to admit. There we go. Um, so, at this point, is the town moving forward with a, a tax lien auction on the properties? Well, that's you know, and so the the question is, they're 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 doing a tax lien auction, and did uh, we want to? all the tax liens for these three for these properties that was the question and uh the um you know so that we hold our options open and you know and so the the open space commission's committee's recommendation was to not sell the tax liens plus also pleasant 101 pleasant street so Uh, do they have to know tonight, Bob, or is this something no, we can table? As far as I know, they don't have to know tonight. Um, I will try to get more information for the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to give it a little more thought because it, it hey, is Bob. a fairly good sized piece there in the middle of uh, wait, wait, let's, the let's hear what our agent has to say. Well, one thing I would remind you is that the lake lodge is on this property still, and that would require demolition to get rid of that structure. So really you'd have to factor that cost in. Where is uh, where is the lake lodge? Uh, it's on the third parcel, I believe you showed. See where you've got the square yellow? Yeah. Oh, north, north two, the the big lot. The big lot. On okay. Hollis. Show. Uh, where's the map? Because lo looking at. Uh, the three, aerial, try, it doesn't look... 356 Hollis. Highlight that. Is this no, that's 356 Hollis. That is well, that's 300 Hollis. I think this is that's the Lake Lodge, the, the yeah, building the on lake, that yeah. property. Yeah, that's yep. the Lake Lodge. An abandoned building, I don't know. Yep. Well, I don't know if yeah. it's abandoned or not. That I don't know. And it's I mean, part of the um, it's it it is part of the access for that property. I believe that property is also that was also part of the proposed development. Um, I had talked to Adam Bernie about these particular lots, and one of the things we both noted was that the Lake Lodge probably would be part of it and would have to come down. Okay. Just something to keep in mind, unless you guys wanted to separate that property off. So, to me, a, a list of questions that I would have then. Would be um, uh, the lodge have to come down, and what would that cost be? And uh, you know, do they uh, for what these might go for at auction? And also, um, you know, what are the taxes owed? Anything else that I should be asking about? I will send those off to the tax collector and to Heather. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, I still haven't uh, finished working on uh, those letters to uh, 192 Townsend Harbor Road. I've been kind of avoiding it. Um, I got to get back to it. Uh, Matt, why don't you give an update on the progress made at Hollis Road? Hold on one second. Okay, so where are we, Bob? Uh, give an update notes. on the maintenance work at Hollis. 
Okay, so essentially uh, the week of February vacation, we have the um, exterminated people going down to handle the mouse problem and the uh, plumber will be going in to do an investigation on the toilets and the interior plumbing to find out if either they can A, repair it quickly on site or B, um, uh, have to come up with a scope of work. Okay. About, um, developing a scope of work, you know, for the rep, for all the other stuff that has to be done there. Has anyone reached out to uh, Rob Oliver about that yet? Yeah, Rob is basically saying he, he doesn't have, I mean, he has guys that are knowledgeable, but he doesn't have the actual construction equipment to back up any work on the property. And I don't know if you know this, but Rob is actually leaving. I did. I heard that today. Yeah. So, but my question is, does he have someone that we, I guess my question is, do we have someone who we, who we can, that he can recommend us that we can hire to develop the uh, scope of work? Um, I can ask him that. I just asked him about his staff, but uh, I can ask him that tomorrow. Because, because that, that was uh, something that Heather mentioned to me. Yeah, he actually put me on to um, the particular plumber we're using because they're already, they already do work with DPW and they're a vendor for the town. Yep. So it saved me a whole bunch of time in having to start to establish accounting relationships. Well, I mean, I mean at this point, I think if we get off the dime here, well, we're going to have to pay somebody to develop the scope of work. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. Because mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to do it, Matt, are you? It's not, not you really don't want me trying to nail you really don't want me using tools no I and, and I'm not advocating that I'm, I'm just I'm advocating that you go back to Rob and see if he can recommend somebody who can develop the scope of work for us okay thank you excuse me Bob uh, yes sir hey, as I review this list I don't see um the that landlocked piece out on Howard Street um that's not up for, uh, they're not selling the, um, they're not selling the tax lien at this time. Okay. Uh, that's actually, um, that's in process of foreclosure. I went and I met with the, uh, um, I met with the tax about that uh, yesterday. Um, and I'm, I'm fairly frustrated uh, it's been over a year, and it seems like, uh, um, you know, we we had a, where we've been waiting for a judgment. Um, you know, there's, if you take a you look at the land records, uh, I forget what, something where it looked to me like, oh, they didn't pay the taxes, so, you know, we could take and, uh, you know, the town could acquire it. And nothing's happened for over a year um i uh said to heather earlier uh, before it started that i want to come in and make an appointment to speak with her because uh, i'm fairly frustrated and i really speak to the her permission to speak to the tax attorney directly um because uh, uh there's a lot of uh or, you know, you got to go see somebody else. You got to go see somebody else. I'm not quite sure what the answer to that question is kind of thing. And uh, this has been going on a long time now. You have no idea how long that's been going on, Bob. I know. It's a, well, I can see if you go and you look in the land record, uh, like twice before, uh, they were ready to foreclose and they paid the back taxes right before, uh, you know, like decades ago. So, yep. yeah, when I was on the way back in the mid 90s was on the old town forest committee with Scott Foster, we were eyeballing this piece trying to get it out of tax lien. So it gives you an idea how long it's been almost 30 years. By the way, I, I, I was reading the, um, not to get off the agenda, but I was reading uh, the town report. And I noticed in there in the t last year's town report that it says uh, the town forest com com commission has one member and that's Richard Birch. Really? I can't really? remember the last time I was appointed to that. <laughs> so, 
Uh, so I'm going to follow up with the uh, town clerk about that also. Because uh, I, I thought that it was it was no longer in existence. Yeah, because I, I think the last time we said it was me, Mel Bertram. I don't remember who the third person was. Yep. All righty. Back to the agenda. Um, I got another email from Heather today saying, uh, looking for uh, input on bylaws. So uh, we'll schedule a workshop on that. Uh, enforcement. Take us through the enforcement here, Matt. Okay, let me just pull up the list. Okay, um, in all honesty, I, I haven't had much of a chance to follow up on enforcement because I have been out the majority of the time from the last meeting um, with COVID-19. So um, I'm catching up to all that. I should have updates for you at the next meeting. Okay, uh, let's uh, talk to uh, 441 Townsend Harbor Road. Nick, did you have something you wanted to say here? Uh, no, I had spoke to Jack last week. Um, I don't know. He was supposed to get Matt something. I don't know if he got it to you yet. I know he was kind of busy because I think he was on vacation. Okay. So is this Jack the engineer? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm with you now. All right. Yeah, I did review a scope of work with uh, Jack Maloney on the telephone. Um, reviewed what the commission was looking for, for, uh, you know, blueprints and Jack is working on that. So we should have something from him soon. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Nick? No. Thank you for uh, hanging in there. Um, update on the trails grant. Um, you know, I think you can see the gates that they're, they're pretty darn substantial. These, these are um, industrial strength outlast anybody on this commission um and so step next step is to move them to the town yard and after that is to work with whoever the new dpw director is to get them installed uh the signs uh we sent off uh i sent off uh the you are here trail map signs um uh, laurel bank and for uh clark's hill because I wanted to do a small batch so we could get them in and see, you know, how, how do they look? And it turned out that the graphics weren't detailed enough. You know, they didn't have enough uh, high enough uh, DPI. So um, I had to go back to uh, MRPC. Uh, they took and uh, developed uh, higher quality graphics uh, using something called Adobe Illustrator. Uh, which now means I can't open the files and look at them. Um, and uh, we sent those in to uh, the sign company. Uh, I just approved the proofs. Uh, I'm pro with them, but I want to get them in so we can get off the dime and, and see, you know, are these going to be good enough for us to use? So that's the status of the trails grant. Um, I continue to get emails from people through the LCC uh email address uh volunteering and uh i'm actually going to go out this friday and uh, work with somebody uh on some of the trails in the um uh in the lane property certificate of compliance 30 lane 30 laurel lane uh you should have it on your on your uh... i do have it and so which one am i the proposed as built site plan. Yep. All right. Let's move this over here to this screen. Let's get rid of this. Let's blow this up. Um, tell us about why, why we should approve this uh, certificate appliance here at 30 Laurel Lane, Matt. Well, I mean, we have the as-built topographic plan. We have the 
comparing it to the original file, there's also a certification in from Dillis and Roy certifying that the work was done in accordance with the order of conditions. So we have all the requisite documentation on file. I went down, I looked at the site, it's stable. I think the only field change we approved, Bob, if you can scroll down a little bit so we can see the top more. Nope, the other way. No, up, 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 I'm sorry, oh. up. Okay. And you can see we approved that shed as a field change. Yeah. Uh, I verified the original measurement away from the lake, which was 70 feet, um, and verified it out in the field. It also scales out on the plan when you actually take the plan on hard copy and do the scale. So that is done in accordance with the field change we approved. So, I mean, everything looks pretty much in order. So I recommend that a certificate be issued. Uh, any comments or questions from commissioners? I'm looking for a motion to approve uh, this certificate of compliance. No moved. Have a second. Second. All right. Roll call. Rich. Aye. Patty. Aye. Mike. Aye. Aye for myself. How about um, the uh, Tri Town Drive? Thought we did that last meeting. I was. I couldn't remember. I don't remember seeing it on the the minutes, but. Okay. Uh, no extension permits? No. No committee report. No open space and trail use issues, except for um, there's going to be a meeting on March 21st at the MRPC atrium um, with Shirley to talk about members of the Shirley Green uh, Committee. Um, to talk about, uh, they want to try, they're trying to develop a north south uh, greenway along the Shirley Lorenberg line. Um, I'm going to go, uh, Mike Tuhill is going to go, Paula Bertram's going to go, uh, two people from uh, Lake Shirley are going to go, and Anna Wilkins is going to go. She's uh, the chief executive officer. I'm not sure of her exact title for uh, the North County Land Trust, and she organized this whole thing. And if anybody wants to go, just let me know. Um, I've been attending uh, the Mass Open Space Conference. Uh, at least I, I saw sessions, mostly uh, looking for uh, sources of funding. And um, I will not be able to be at the meeting on March 16th and the meeting on April 20th. So I hope a uh, chair available uh, for those meetings. Hint, hint, Mr. Bursch. Yeah, I should be available for both of those. I should be, yeah. The Fine. 16th, of, so it's a second meeting, March, second meeting, April. Exactly. Yep, no, I will be there. Perfect, because I don't do these meetings when I'm on vacation. I wish I could say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're on vacation so much, Rich. <laughs> um, any other questions? Uh, public comment from the commissioners or members of the public. Bob, just one quick thing. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to let you guys know, Tom Christopher, who is, uh, has worked with us as a consultant and has represented applicants and is a very good friend of the commission. Yeah. Um, a few weeks ago, lost his wife, Shirley, to cancer. Oh boy. Uh, so if you guys could all keep him in your thoughts, he's, I talked to him yesterday, actually, he's doing very well. He's holding his own. Um, he has a lot of support around him, but he's been a friend of this commission and a friend of mine personally for many, many years. And I uh, just wanted to make note of that for you guys. Thank you. Sorry for your loss. Um, or the other thing is uh, uh, Gary Goldrup uh, sent me a, an email saying that uh, he didn't really want to include uh, graveling uh, the landing area in, in the, uh, in the prospectus, and I've twice now called and asked him to call me, and he's never returned my call, uh, so we could discuss it. Uh, so I don't think he said. Um, I think that's it. I'm looking for. Oh, see what time it is. Eight fourteen forty four minutes. I'm looking Someone. for a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All right. Motion and second. Roll call. Rich. Aye. Uh, 
Uh, Patty. Aye. Mike. Aye. Aye for myself. Thank, Thank you, you all. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have, a good night, me, um, have a good night. Good night, all. Matt, can you send me the contact information for uh, that engineer from uh, what would have been Bingham, Wesley Fils, or whatever his name is? Fliss? Wesley Fliss. Yeah, and hey, while I get while we're still here, while I yeah. while those kids are still here, um, I got an e. I think Bill Emke had signed on um, during the meeting and then signed off. Um, okay. I got an email from him yeah. that 